When you need someone to talk to and you don't know what to do, call us 41-4400. When you're feeling all alone and they turn their back on you, call us 41-4400. Call us 41-4400. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the Kind Counseling Podcast. Kind Counseling is a mental health practice where our mission is to give hope to the hopeless through mental health empowerment and spiritual insight. And today's guest is Minister Reggie Alvarez. Let's give Minister Reggie a round of applause. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Minister Reggie Alvarez is an ordained minister, step dance choreographer, director, youth leader, missionary, and teacher. Through his missionary travels from 1999 to 2003, Reggie has helped to establish over eight multicultural step ministries in over five countries, such as Holland, London, South Africa, Germany, and the Czech Republic while sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today, under the vision of Dr. A.R. Bernard Sr., senior pastor and founder of the Christian Cultural Center, Reggie Leeds Boots, one of the largest step ministries in New York City and abroad. Ministering with such anointed gospel legends as Fred Hammond, Kirk Franklin, Karen Clark Sheard, and Byron Cage. Boots has appeared on TBN, Gospel Superfest, the Universal Circus, featured as the first gospel step team at Carnegie Hall, and most recently at City Field. Boots has grown to be known as a as a the- theatrical and interactive step ministry. Let's welcome Minister Reggie Alvarez once All again. Right. Welcome, Reggie. welcome. Right. It's All so right. good to have you with us today. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah, Brother Reggie, it's so good to see you, man. Yes, sir. And um, we thank you for coming out today, um, you know, and sharing your time with us. And, um, you know, before we get into the, um, you know, a little bit about yourself, why, tell us a little bit about Boots, man. Uh, we, you know, we heard a little bit in the intro, but tell us a little bit about it. Oh, man, Boots. Uh, well, it started off really as uh, the ICB Step Team that's under Pastor um, some years ago. Well, not some years ago, but like in the maybe late 90s. Uh, when I got saved in 95. And uh, maybe two or three years later, I was looking to just kind of get into a men's ministry. Mm. And Pastor was starting an ICB, and I kind of joined that. And then out of that, there was an introduction to a men's step team. Mm. I didn't really care about stepping, right. um, but it was an opportunity to kind of like meet more uh, brothers, mm. meet more men. Mm. I joined it. Um, it was hard. Um, I was doing it for like three weeks, and I decided, I remember <laughs> I decided on the third week I wasn't going to do it anymore. Okay. I was going to bow out quietly. All right. But what happened was, and it's interesting, what happened was there was a, um, one of the brothers there had offered us a ride home. At the time, I didn't have a car. Mm-hmm. And he offered a couple of us a ride home. And it was late after rehearsals, like around 10. And um, he was driving us home, and then we kind of stopped off at a diner. Right. And in the diner, we had like this most incredible um, fellowship, incredible mm-hmm. conversation. And I knew at that moment I couldn't leave. Because this is what I always oh, wow. wanted, just to be around other brothers of, of the faith. Okay. Wow. And I've been there ever since, and God just changed everything around. And then from the men's team, I kind of started the women's team. Wow. Oh, wow. From the, I had the women's team for like a good seven years. Out of the women's team came the youth. It kind of like was in... Okay. It, it, it organically oh, happened. Yeah. Wow. The youth just started coming because the... Everybody just got younger and younger. I was the only one that kind of stuck around. <laughs> and next thing you know, I was just working with you. Wow. And then, um, then we had to officially give it a name. Okay. okay. Just Boots, which came from Pastor um, A.R. Bernard himself. Okay. So, so wait a minute. So, well, so, so you yeah. joined the STEP team. I, I thought, joined I thought, the STEP I thought team. you started it. Oh. I didn't know anything about STEP. I oh, didn't wow. care about it. Okay. I really just joined it just to kind of get in, to meet more brothers. Okay. I didn't know it was um, so incredibly physical, mm. incredibly disciplined, mm-hmm. fun, 
Um, but also, I didn't know that I would love it the way I love it mm. so much. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. You have no kind of dance experience no. or stamp experience wow, at that's all. That's amazing. No, no fraternity experience. Nope, not right. at all. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, fraternity. <laughs> nope. Yes. Wow. That's okay. amazing because um, you know, you when when I see you doing it, you look so natural right. at it. It just I just always assumed that that was your baby. No, <laughs> um, I learned under Lamont O'Neill, who's on the choir yes. uh, at, yeah. at CCC, you know, um, and what happened was uh, when I said I wasn't going to, I was going to bow out quietly mm-hmm. um, and I had that fellowship. I remember going home that night after the fellowship with the men and I said, I prayed, I said, God, because I was having a challenge learning. I thought I was, mm-hmm. you know, when you join the step team and you feel like you're the slowest one learning and you feel like mm-hmm. you're holding everybody back. So I, I was... You know, I was kind of wrestling with that. Mm. And so I prayed. I said, God, you know, just kind of help me to learn quick so I could teach somebody else. And I mm. think it was like that, uh, you know, expand your border prayer. Yeah. Okay. And then yes, yes. everything changed. I started learning really quick. And oh, then wow. um, next thing you know, I was in Europe teaching. Wow. Amen. Yeah, everything happened very quickly. Quickly. Wow. Know? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's amazing. So now, so now you said, um, you said just now that you, you got saved in 1995. Yeah. So, um, and you know, you said you were looking for men to, to fellowship with, get involved with. What what was your life like before that, before nineteen ninety five? Yeah, man, I was. Um, you know, I grew up. It, it was just me, my mom, and my sister. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, I was the only guy in my family. Um, and I was wild. You know, my father was uh, very abusive when I was really young. Mm-hmm. He left our family when I was about seven. Okay. Um, but he did a, quite a bit of damage before he left. Even at the age of seven, I was exposed to a lot of things mm-hmm. uh, way too early. Mm-hmm. And um, when he left us, you know, um, it was painful. And the pain really didn't set in until I got older and realized, mm-hmm. you know, when you start hanging out with other people and they have fathers and stuff, mm-hmm. and I realized that right. my father wasn't around. So I became kind of angry and bitter. Mm-hmm. And I began to give my mother a hard time, like most young men do, because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I started hanging out with my friends. Um, I wouldn't go to school. I started smoking. Right. Um, and so I became very wild and, and unhinged. And um, my cousin, um, who uh, your daughter knows, um, both of my godchildren are on the step team, Timothy and Rachel. Mm-hmm. But my cousin at the time had, um, was going to Brooklyn Tab. Mm-hmm. And then he left Brooklyn Tap and started going to CLC, Christian Life Center. Right. Okay. He had invited me first to Brooklyn Tap when he was still going there. Mm-hmm. And I went. And it was like in 1994 or something like that. Okay. And um, it, it was the most beautiful experience, but the most um, confusing experience. Because mm. I, it was my first time ever going into a church. Okay. okay. And the Brooklyn Tap, you know, they have this incredible choir. Yes. Right. And they sang and I felt... The more they sang, the more dirty I felt. Mm. I felt dirty. Mm. I felt nasty. And I was like, mm. oh, I can't be in here. Wow. Mm. I was confused about how I felt. I wow. never felt like that. Mm. So I left. I, I, I couldn't take it. I went outside. Wow. And then um, uh, I waited for the service to be over. And my cousin came and he asked me if everything was okay. I said, yeah, but I didn't know how to tell him how I felt. Right. Mm. And after that, my life started to spiral more downwards. I became mm. more, because now I couldn't stop hearing God, mm. I felt like He was mm. talking to me, yes. and I was I was trying to refuse what I heard, you know, okay. like mm. okay. you know, just kind of like telling me that my life was a was a, was a value, like I, you know, because mm. at the time I didn't feel valuable. I, okay. I felt, you know, then my cousin came to me again. He invited me to CLC. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say no, mm-hmm. um, but me and him are so tight, you know. I just said, yeah, I'll go with you, and I went and I gave my life um, that day when Pastor A. R. Bernard came out and spoke a word. And wow. everything changed. Wow, yeah. wow. So it's like the seed was planted at Brooklyn Tab. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things we, um, we're we trying to do with um, with the podcast is really just kind of give hope to people that, you know, might be struggling or feeling hopeless. Yeah. And um, we, we, we have a, a teenage boys group that we meet every Thursday. And, um, you know, we have some young men that are dealing with some trouble, you know, troubling situations. Yeah. So what what would you say to a young man who um, who's in a you know tough situation, you know things are looking hopeless? Um, obviously, you've experienced some of that. What would you say to that young person today, that young man? Well, one I would say you know it's okay that like for for me I was when I remember uh, being twelve or thirteen years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's young. 
Yeah. And um, I had a problem one time. I couldn't get up and I couldn't move my neck. Okay. Um, it was really bad, and, and my mother had to take me to the hospital. It was bad. And you know what the doctor told me? Mm -hmm. The doctor told me, you need to talk to someone. He said, you have nothing but rage. Wow. Or that's what it was. I didn't have any physical wow. issue. Wow. He just said, do you talk to someone? I said, no. He said, I had all this rage because I was full of anger. And right. it, was, it was, you know... Um, so that was like all the pent-up emotions? Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, because... Wow. And I had an anger issue problem. So when I did get angry, I did really crazy things, you mm -hmm. know, punching windows and right. just mm. things because I wanted to feel the pain. Mm. Okay. And so um, and um, I had a co uh, an older cousin who would start, he started to talk to me and I had to open up and let him, let him in. Mm. And I, what I would say to you, young man, um, mm. is one, the pain is real. Let it, let it hurt, but don't hurt the wrong way. Like mm. it's okay to have that one person. I know it's, it's not easy to talk. It's not easy to right. share, but it's important. You know, um, sometimes it's not easy to talk to your parents. I know no. right. my mother yeah. didn't know anything until I was, until after I got, I gave my life to God. Is when I started to tell her okay. all the stuff I was going through. Okay, but yeah. um, I think it's to, to find that one person who, especially someone who offers you. I had a lot of people who offered me. Mm. They saw how crazy I was, and okay. I didn't open up to everybody. But there was this one person who I kind of opened up to, and that started to help me okay. in terms of like managing my anger. Um, he told me it was okay to hurt. Mm -hmm. He told me it was okay to be angry. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, he offered me, you know, he took me to boxing gyms. Okay. I went to boxing gyms. Um, he tried to get me involved in certain activities, sports. Right, right. Find, you know, ways, ways to kind of manage to my yeah. energy the right way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I was doing all the wrong things, smoking, drinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. While and out, doing mm -hmm. stupidness. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, like, you know, find someone who, 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 who has a heart for you, who wants to see the best for you. And, mm -hmm. you know, and believe what they say. A lot of times I didn't believe what somebody said about me. Mm. You know, when, when mm. you when you don't feel valuable right. and somebody else sees your value, you don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you don't see it. You know, you, yeah. you know, and I, I would say kinda of believe it. Somebody see some if they're taking the time to tell you that you're different, that you're special. Yeah. That yeah. there's something about you. Yeah, yeah. And you know, to really believe it. You know, yeah. Wow, we need to have you come for the point school. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna look into that. <laughs> well well, you know, um, I, I mean, obviously, people see you now as Minister Reggie, right? So the yeah. the perception is that oh well, you know, Minister Reggie is like you, you know, mm. like always been Minister Reggie. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, as comfortable as you are, like how how bad did it get for you? I mean, if you if you don't mind sharing, like how how bad did it get? I mean, it got bad. Um, I have uh, you. I know you. They're not really. You know, you see scars on my fingers. I had gotten stabbed. Mm. Um, uh, in my fingers, uh, stabbed mm. in the back. Mm. This is from just fighting all the time. Mm. I, I was arrested all the time. Mm. But I'll say this to you. Um, I remember the first time I really literally heard God's voice was in a jail cell. Mm. Wow. And I, I was just uh, I was drinking that night with my friends. We got into fights up in the city. Um, cops came and I, I mouthed off at the cops and they arrested me. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I had just got a stud in my ear. I used to have a, you know, trying to be like, trying to be different, but looking like everybody else. You know, you try yeah, to be different. Yeah, right. yeah. And I remember um, I was so violent that they kept, um, they kept me handcuffed behind my back mm -hmm. in the cell. Like, usually they'll put your, you know, they'll take the cuffs off mm -hmm. or they'll leave your hands in the front. But they left my hands in the back. All right. And um, I sat down. I remember sitting down on the floor, watching all these guys come in, getting arrested. They all looked the same. Mm. They all had on mm. studs. They all looked angry. Mm. Okay. And God said to me, you are no different, but you are. I remember hearing oh, wow. that. I remember when I got home, I took the, the stud out and I threw it down the sink. In the, mm -hmm. I mean, stupidest thing to do, but <laughs> it was just like my Somebody. sign of like, yo, this, right. ain't, this yeah. is not doing nothing for me. Right, right, right. You know, I remember that was the beginning of my change. Okay. So, but it got, it, got, it got bad. You know, I was, um, like I said, just fighting all the time. Um, I was really nasty to my mom, mm. Mm. disrespectful to my mom. Mm. My mom was a single mother from Haiti. Mm. Okay. And um, uh, I didn't learn until years later into my adulthood that she learned English mm. from me coming home oh. from school. Wow. Right, right. You know, like that's how strong my mom was. Right. And that's how much she, you know. But, um, but I, tr I treated her nasty because I wanted to be who I wanted to be. I wanted to do what I wanted to do without right. no... Right. Um, Supervision. I used to come home one time. I wanted to come home. 
but my mother stayed praying. My mother stayed loving me. My, mo- my mom stayed believing in me. So, right. so your mom knew the Lord. She knew the she Lord. Knew yeah. The Lord. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Nothing like a praying mother. Nothing like a praying mother. <laughs> you get y'all every time. For real. For real. For real. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, like you mentioned also, like your uh, relationship with your dad. Like, how, how how did you deal with like the pain of your father's absence? Like, how how did you deal with that? Um. You, you, because he left so early, but man, you know, okay, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get real. So like when he left, uh, he left, when I say he left a lot of damage, it was like, he, um, he, he, he didn't know it, but he exposed me to pornography mm. by the, like at the age of seven, wow. mm. because I found all the stuff right. in the house. Mm. Um, he was abusive to my mom. I saw that happen. Mm. He was abusive to us. All right. Um, and so but but when you're that young you kind of tend to think it's regular right you know right. you don't know it's right. abuse right. you just think right. exactly. you know we we, hate, we get used to get beaten and all that. Right. i took it like the way the, but the way that he used to do it sometimes i you know of course i was scared of him right mm. um i, I uh, there was one um there's this word ceiling right the ceiling mm-hmm. i remember having a you know how you get uh, you have to you get spelling words to take home mm-hmm. you have to they I don't know how, if they do it these days, but they fold the paper up four in fours, mm-hmm. open it up, and you have to write the spelling words four times yeah, in each well, section. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> right? So yeah. I remember, and they give you like 10 or 20 words. One of my words was ceiling, and I kept spelling the word ceiling wrong. Mm. You know, ceiling is C-E-I-L, right? Mm. I kept spelling it S-E-A-L-I-N-G. I was spelling it wrong. Mm. And I remember my father was sitting at the table with me. Every time I spelled it wrong, he would slam my head on the table. Mm. And my nose would bleed, but he didn't care. I thought that was regular. Mm. I thought it was, you know, I, and I remember I had a flashback. I was, um, when I started doing mentoring, mm. right before stepping. Okay. Right before stepping, I got involved in mentoring. That's, I think that's how I started falling in love with youth. Okay. Is I was mentoring this young boy for a favor for a mother who I met at a fellowship. And um, I started mentoring her son. And we were on the, I, I would pick him up from school. He was about five, six years old. And we was on the bus and he had to spell a word. And I remember he had a, dif- he had a difficult time spelling the word. And I remember getting angry. Mm. I remember getting angry like, cause I knew he knew, mm. but he kept spelling it wrong. And then God showed me my father. Yes. Mm. And yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I was, I was patient, I was loving. I said, let me not repeat that cycle right. but it's so easy to repeat yes, right. yes, it right. is. especially right. when it's all you know that when it's all you yeah, know yeah yeah that's so true yeah. so true we have to be careful of that too yeah yeah raising when we're raising kids you know um i know for me it's like sometimes i see things that i grew up with that my parents did that i didn't like that's right you know and but sometimes i repeat it with them and i have to catch myself sometimes and i don't always you know sometimes yeah. it does manifest but you know that's so important for us to uh, be mindful of that yeah and, uh, and let me say this too when we, when we get older because we're from the caribbean there's some things that we accepted because it's cultural right, right. Exactly. but it still doesn't make it right, right. and i had to learn that as yeah. i got older and i got more wise and I understood our parents did it the way they did, that they knew. Mm-hmm. And I don't hold that against them. I mean, there were certain things that, man, I don't think should have happened, even if it's a, even if you're of another culture. It's just right. some things that just aren't right. Right, right. But right. you used to try to find excuses for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. and as I got older, I knew that certain things was what it was. It right. was it was what it was. But God had to kind of help me to to heal mm-hmm. and to forgive and to move on mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and it, it takes time mm-hmm. it so takes let me time. ask you about that though because you, you just said something that I've been thinking about lately and I was um, mentoring um, my, my cousin of mine um, who was having some issues with her mom and stuff and one of the things I said to her was uh, pretty much what you just said is that sometimes it's all they know so did that kind of help you as far as get through the forgiveness process like because I think when when you look at it from that perspective and that's what I said to my cousin I said your mom didn't do didn't make the best decisions but she was really doing the very best she knew how to do yeah so and she kind of got quiet when I said that to her because I don't think she ever understood that you know because it's not easy to give something that you've never really received yeah sometimes you're able to but sometimes you're not so come into that understanding 
does did that help you with the forgiveness process um, towards your dad? Because maybe somebody was doing those things to him. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm gonna say no. 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 And, and the reason why for me, what you said is is incredible. It's good. Mm-hmm. But for me, I don't think it's that way because I don't know. I don't have that kind of information on my father. I don't know how he grew up. Mm. I don't know. Um, you know, what kind of um, childhood he had. Okay. I don't know. Right, right. Um, I, let me just say, share this with you. Um, I started going to a seminary mm-hmm. in 2007. Okay. And now prior to that, I used to think that I wasn't really all that smart. Mm-hmm. I had street smart, but I didn't think I was, like, really educated. And I left school early. I dropped out of school early. Mm-hmm. So seminary came... Um, by way of my ministerial calling, mm-hmm. you know, pastors, pastors saw something in me. He said, "I gotta get you in school. I got so he could teach me how to articulate my faith better." Okay. That's what seminary was for me. Okay. But I was nervous about going. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was it was by divine favor because when I got into the school, now mind you, I haven't been to school since I was in junior high school. Didn't mm-hmm. go. I, you know, I was dropped. When I said I dropped out, I dropped out. Mm-hmm. So now I'm in seminary, but they put me in a master's program. Didn't even know what a master's program was. Mm. Wow. Anyway, um, I'm writing these papers, and long story short, I remember getting a A plus on one paper, okay. and an A plus. Now, before I continue, I want to say that as in the short time that I knew my father, he called me stupid a lot. Okay. So I believed it. Okay. Mm. I believed I was slow. I believed I was stupid. Okay. Mm. Right. So you know, you grow older, you don't answer questions that you think you know because you're. You don't want to be wrong, right? And you don't right, people. Right. He don't. He should have known that. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of things I didn't push myself because I just thought, why, why try to learn it? You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. So here I am in school. I wrote this paper. Um, it was a hard paper. I got an A plus on the paper, but there was a lot of red marks, a lot of grammar mistakes. So now I'm, I'm kind of like confused. Why did I get an A plus on this paper and it has so much grammar um, uh, errors on it? So I went and I spoke to my professor, and he said, Reggie, like, your paper was genius. Your interaction with the material was absolutely... I read your paper twice. That's what he said to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't care for the word genius. Okay. He called me genius, and I didn't care for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because how can I be a genius? Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So I had a lot of things working, working in my mind. One... Because Pastor knew so many people in the school, I'm thinking they know I'm from the church, so maybe oh. they're doing oh, okay. me a favor. Okay. Because wow. there's no way I, I should have got an A plus. Okay. Wow. Right. Okay. All these things are working in my mind because right. I don't believe I'm I'm worth an A plus. Hmm. Nyack is you know up in the city. Mm-hmm. I remember when I, I left, my wife called. Or we, we weren't married yet. Monique was, you know, we were dating, and she was she lived in Vegas, and she called me because she knew. I handed in my paper, and you know, she knew I was getting my paper back. And uh, she said, Reggie, what did you get in your paper? I said, an A+. Plus. But the way I said it to her, it sounded like I got an F. Right. And she said, you're not excited? I said, no, nah, I don't know, babe. And I, I said, I'll call you back. I couldn't talk because mm. I, became, I became crazy emotional. Mm. And I'm walking down the street. It's crowded. It's a nice sunny day. And I stopped. I had to stop, and I had to let the tears fall. Mm. Right? Right there in the middle of the street. Mm. Wow. And... While I'm crying, uh, a vision of my father comes up in front of me, mm. and I get angry because mm. I'm like, all this time, you made me feel like I was stupid mm. my whole life because of you. Mm. I'm, you know, I got mad and I was angry. I, I, I must have looked crazy in the street because mm. I was going through these emotions. I mean, it wasn't. I don't think I was doing all of this, but in my mm. brain, mm-hmm. I was hurt. I was angry. Then I saw like a hand. It was like God's hand. Move my father out the way. Mm. It was like God saying, let him go. I had to bring you to school to show you how intelligent you really are. Wow. His words were damaging, but they weren't true. Wow. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had yeah. to go through that. Right, you know, right, so right. God will put you in a situation to show you how incredible you are. But sometimes, the people closest to you, when they say things, you believe yeah, them yeah. because... Right. Yeah, you you give their words weight. Right. Especially if right. it's your father right. or your mother or your sister or your best friend. Yeah. You give their words weight and when they say they say sticks and stones may break they your bones, but words words, will, words can kill you. Yes, yes they sure words can. can destroy you. They sure if can. and if you give them that power to Yes, they can. You know, especially yeah. if your esteem mm-hmm. or if your security is not strong. Mm-hmm. 
people's words can really mm. kind of kill you. you okay. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's amazing, though. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, um, you know, I'm just thinking about like, you know, you working with teenagers with um, boots and. You'd say like some of your passion for your, the teenagers comes out of your own story. Yeah. Sounds like yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, okay. Definitely. all right. So, so it's al- it's almost like it's come full circle. It seems like and and I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know. Um, actually, I was working for Bro- Brooklyn Prep um, for eighteen years, mm-hmm. and that came about. I wasn't looking to work with children. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was. I thought I'm still. I still got like a little <laughs> little roughness. I'm like I don't think I should be around kids all right. or anything like that. And what happened was I was on mission. Mm -hmm. I came back from mission. Uh, Pastor uh, had, I was working, I was doing moving jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how Pastor, his secretary had gotten my number. That was Nextel days. I don't know if you know Nextel. (laughs) Nextel days, I got a call on my Nextel from Pastor's secretary asking if if I was working. Now the person I worked with also went to see CLC. Right, he was the person I worked for. And um, I said, yeah, I'm working. And I said, okay, thank you. That was it. The person called two more times. The third time that the pastor secretary called, my boss said, if that's pastor secretary, let her know that you're fired. (laughs) Because he obviously (laughs) knew pastor was looking for something. Okay. So they called me. I said, no, I'm not working right now, right? (laughs) Because he didn't want me to lie. Okay. So he literally fired me. Wow. Um, Pastor wants you to come in for for an interview. So now, in my mind, I'm thinking... Mm-hmm. Logistics. I'm gonna work cleaning the building. I was, cause okay. I'm a, I'm a late, I'm a hard labor worker. All okay. Right. So I'm being interviewed. I sat down at the table. This woman named Miss Reinhardt is interviewing me. Okay. But when she's interviewing me, the questions are odd, cause she's asking me about children. She's asking me about mm-hmm. my education. So I stopped and I realized I'm being interviewed for a teaching position. Mm. And I stopped her, and I said, I'm sorry, Miss Reinhardt. Um, I have a police record. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never worked with children. I don't think I'm good with working with children. So, you know, I, I'm th- I thank you, but I thought I was here for something else. Mm-hmm. So I, I just want to be honest and upfront. I don't know if this is for me. And she said, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Alvarez. You're not being interviewed. You're being processed. Pastor already wow. gave you the job. Oh, wow. That's a, <laughs> okay. Wow. What can I say? Really? You know what I'm saying? Wow. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? You know? But yeah. it, it, was, it was mind-boggling to me, but then Pastor saw something. Remember when I said... When somebody sees something in you, you got to believe it. Right, and right. pastor saw something in me, and uh, I've been teaching ever since then. Wow. Yeah. So how has your experiences transferred um, to your your teaching experience, like, you know, just on a day-to-day basis? I don't know, what, what age group were you teaching? Uh, kindergarten. Oh, wow. little kids. Kindergarten. Yeah. Okay. And, and the mm-hmm. reason why, you, you know, I'm sorry, because I kind of, I don't, I don't want, uh, you know, um, veered away from your question originally, mm-hmm. um, was my personal experience, Mm -hmm. when I got that job, because I think it's going to tie into your question as well, Mm -hmm. when I got the job, I didn't know, again, I didn't know why a pastor would give it to me, Mm -hmm. but I had to realize it was more of God, because I'm working with six-year-olds, remember, that's the age where I was damaged, that's the Mm -hmm. age that my father left, Mm -hmm. so it was like, now God has put me in a position to be a father to, Mm -hmm. a father-like figure to six-year-olds, and kind of like, almost like healing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, because I didn't think I was going to be good with children. I love children. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how much fun I would have working with them, learning from them, laughing from their stories. Right. Mm-hmm. All the things that, that, and you know, one of the first men that I really loved when I was a child was my kindergarten teacher. Mm-hmm. A, a t- big, gruffy white man named Mr. <laughs> Kelman. I loved him though because he, he played with us. Mm-hmm. He got down on the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, when he, he, t- he taught us, he made us laugh. And th- um, those things, those were seeds planted in me that I didn't know. Right. But God had to put me in a environment where he could show me that. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and that transferred to the children and it okay. transferred to the teens. Okay. Right, you know, right, so right. that's to answer your question originally. Okay. Wow. All right. Wow. Amazing. So, so I mean, it's um, I mean, some people know about boots, right? I mean, if you want to just uh, maybe share a little bit with the audience in terms of boots and just, you know, some of the things that um, like how do people get involved in boots? Like if they have children, yeah, um, you know, boots that kind of stuff. is uh, my pride and joy. I right. guess. Yes, it I is. Boots. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a step ministry. Um, it came out of the I- when I joined the ICB and right. Remnant. 
And um, it, we became official, I would say, in 2003. Okay. Um, but really started to kind of push more, uh, as I got more serious about how God was making it grow in 2004. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a step team where um, it's character development, spiritual development, mm. but also um, because the step world is so intense, I didn't want to water it down. Mm. So um, we work as hard as those who prepare for competitions. Even though mm. we don't do much competition, okay. we work just as hard. I demand a lot in terms of our kids to present themselves physically, how they express themselves, yeah. how they vocalize the step. But, um, but it's all really for God's glory. That's right. the only, the, the, the big difference is that I'm not ashamed to take the, the, the gift, um, the artistry of step and really kind of transfer it into worship mm -hmm. because it helps the kids also draw nearer to God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to understand ministry because mm -hmm. they get a chance to go in front of a lot of people and really share their faith mm -hmm. um, and to be genuine about the faith not you know uh, we we not I'm not scared of the word performance but mm -hmm. I kind of teach the kids it's not a performance right you're right. not performing okay. you're, there's people whose lives depend on our ministry yeah. mm -hmm. on on seeing the genuineness of God in us yeah mm -hmm. e even as young people so they draw young people yeah from there, I started doing workshops. Okay. Um, I do workshops every summer, a six-week workshop. Yes. Kind of open it up to children, teens, and adults. Just for them to come and have a good time. I'm going to join next summer. <laughs> yes, please join. <laughs> it's it's, it's um, Pastor Jamal actually kind of encouraged me to do it years ago. I don't know if he remembers, mm. but he kind of encouraged it. And I think because um, I, started, I was doing workshops first at Allen AME. Oh, funny. Oh, wow. Funny, okay. right? I was doing okay. workshops there. I don't know how they found out about me, you know. I kind of got my start there first, okay. mm. understanding um, I was doing the, um, their conferences and seminars, and I would be a judge at step teams, dance competitions, and then they asked me to come back and do workshops. Okay. And it, I was like, wow. I didn't know, you know, I used to draw hundreds of people to come to the workshop. Mm -hmm. And then um, I started doing it at, at the church um, um, for the youth, mm -hmm. opening it up for the adults and for the teens that's what made it different mm -hmm. um, and it's been amazing and so from the workshops mm -hmm. every summer we kind of some of the kids come back and say they want to be a part of it full time right, right, and right. so that's how the ministry kind of um, you know it, it gets renewed every I would say every three to four years okay yeah. new kids come in because yeah. kids stay yeah, okay. yeah they, 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 stay. they, they hang stay. out that's I've had some kids as long as 10 years mm. I watched wow. them from you know because because I taught at Brooklyn Prep at the school, mm -hmm. some of the kindergarten students come back to Boots and I watch. Okay. So it's an opportunity to watch them grow up. Grow up right. yeah. I've known them since six. They're 26 now. Wow. And it's okay. amazing. Some of them came back to help me lead. And okay. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I got to tell you that before I knew, when we first came to CCC, before I knew who was in charge of that step team, <laughs> I said, this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you can just tell. That I said to myself, whoever's in charge of that ministry is not playing. Mm -hmm. They are serious about this ministry right here because the excellence mm -hmm. with which it's done mm -hmm. is apparent. Amen. It's very apparent. Yeah. So, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just, I was like, it's whoever's doing this is, is not playing. You, you know where that comes from? I told you, like, I didn't really care for stepping. Right. Mm -hmm. Because um, one of the things that used to confuse me, you know, like, remember back in the Greek, Greek, Greek fests and all that mm -hmm. kind of right, stuff every right, summer? Right. Mm -hmm. I, went, I went to one, and you would see they would have a lot of steppers. Mm -hmm. right. They would step. They would say positive things, mm -hmm. but they would do negative things. Mm -hmm. And now, I wasn't a Christian then. I was right. living in the world. I was wild. But my mindset and my friend, you know, the guys I grew up with, our mindset was you got to be about what you are about. Mm. If you're going to be in the church, be in the church. If you're going to be in the street, be in the street. Mm. Don't be a hypocrite. Right. Right. So that used to confuse me, mm. you know. And um, I was passionate when I was not saved. Right. But I was still passionate when I got saved. Right. And I said, anything that I do, I'm going to do with passion. Mm. Okay. Like, I love music. I love to DJ. Okay. okay. I love to write. So I still do all of that with passion. Right. You know, you want people to feel what you're saying. Absolutely. You want people to feel what you're doing. So, um, so that, you know, when, when I started doing it with the kids, I had to pray. I said, God, how do I get the passion out of them? Mm. And God really just told me to be authentically myself. 
Okay. Like okay. love the kids. Right. Okay. Get on them when it's time to get on them. Be right. be yourself. Right. They'll, right. they'll respond to you being you. Right. Yeah. You right. know, and worship me for real. Don't teach them how to worship. Worship me and they'll worship. That's right. You can't teach you can't make somebody right. love somebody else. You right. can't make people that's love somebody. Right. That's right. They gotta know God for themselves. And that's pretty much what I do. That's you right. know, and, and and I think I think the the authenticity of the ministry comes from that. It comes from the leader. The leader has to be authentic. Yes, exactly, right. The leader has to be right. genuine. Absolutely. Your life has to be an open book. Yes. Um, some of the kids who I said were with me for a long time saw me as a single man. Okay. They knew when I met Monique. Okay. Um, I let my life be open. They knew right. I wasn't um, running around with other women. Right. I taught them how uh, to respect women, how to mm-hmm. respect yourself. Mm-hmm. I teach the young men to... Um, Respect and to protect the virtue of the woman, of their friends, of this. Because you know, when when I was starting the step team, and somebody says, "Is it unisex?" I said, "Yeah." If it, is it boy, both boys and girls? I said, "Right." You know, um, you know, guys are gonna like the girls, and girls are gonna like the guys. And I wrestled with that for a minute, mm-hmm. and God said to me, "Your job is to teach them mm-hmm. how to be brothers and sisters, how to uh-huh. show them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't be scared of it, because it's gonna happen anyway. Right, it's right, true. Right. it's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. Guys like girls, there's nothing wrong with that." Right. But how do you nurture that the mm-hmm. right way? How do they right. see it? in a healthy way? You yeah, know, right. and so I taught, taught the girls how to respect and protect the integrity of the boys, how mm-hmm. to you know respect each other, and it's it's been awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, it's not yeah. not without its issues. It's right. not without its challenges. Right, right, right. But right. it's been the most incredible um, experience in my life. Yeah, these boys. Yeah. And they genuinely love you, from what I see, from what I've witnessed. They yeah. genuinely love you. You know, me and my wife, we don't have any children. And she'll probably kill me if I keep saying that. But, um, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming. And, um, but I think from my experiences, again, from the stuff I went through being young, and I don't know. I don't know what it was that God put in me, but I'm crazy about the kids. Mm. I am. I can't. That's great. You know, um, before I met my, wa- my wife, I would take the kids home with me. And what, what I mean is, like, I, I would take them, I would drive them home, take them home go home, if they had issues, they could call me. Mm-hmm. I remember my wife didn't understand that. I was, mm-hmm. When we got married, one time, I, it was one o'clock in the morning, uh, a father calls me, his son, he can't, he doesn't know where his son is. His son, him and his son was, were, were at odds. Mm-hmm. I called him, he answered. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was up in the Bronx, I, just, I was living in bed at the time. I said, I'm, I'm coming to get you. I got dressed, went to the wow. Bronx, picked him up, Talk to him on the way back. Your, your father's trying. He called me. He's trying. Mm. I said, I don't have my father. So I gave him my story. Like, right. you got to try. If your father's trying, you got to you gotta accept that he's making an effort. Right. Right. And you know what I'm saying? I came home 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. My wife was looking at me sideways like, oh, my God, <laughs> is, this, is this what's going to happen? <laughs> but, so I had to learn how to kind of, like, balance and everything yeah. like that. But, right. I mean, yeah. I'm, I love the kids. And I don't... Yes. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go to bed for them. That's know? that's awesome, and yeah, that's, that's what great. a lot of them need. Um, you know, because we are living in a society, um, unfortunately, where there are a lot of fatherless boys and girls, yeah, yeah. and so they need people like you. I think it's even amazing that um, you that you were a kindergarten teacher, because yeah, it's it's you know, rare to right. find right. a man, much less a black man. You know, being a kindergarten can, teacher. Can I tell you how that happened? Sure. Remember I told you I was mentoring a young boy? Mm-hmm. Okay, so he was going to a school on Utica. I forgot the name of the church. It's a well-known church on Utica and and um, and and maybe 50th. I can't remember this. Mm-hmm. Cross Street. Okay. But um, I remember taking him to school, mm-hmm. walking inside the school, and walking through um, the hallways. I'm, I'm looking into... Look, Looking in every classroom, mm. I don't see no men. Mm. Right. Yeah. I see all these women. Yeah. Thank God for our women. Mm. Right. But we need balance in the school system as yeah. well. Yeah. And I remember, and I, I wasn't thinking about school. I wasn't teaching. It was far from my mind. Mm. I'm just thinking, man, there's a lot of women here. There's no men. Mm. Right. And um, I remember just thinking it. Mm-hmm. And you know, I dropped them off and I was leaving. And I was like, man, Lord, we need more male teachers. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what was about Some to happen. Prophecy. Yeah, that, that's what it was. It was like, <laughs> right, right. So I tell right. people, be careful what you ask for. That's you know what right. I'm saying? Well, so, listen. That's yeah. how that, that Whoever happens. has the burden has to be the one to go, that's right? Right, right. That's right. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. Amazing, yeah. though. That's amazing, though. We do need more male teachers. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. listen. Um, I feel like we can sit here and talk. Yeah. <laughs> like all afternoon, man. But um, 
Listen, we, we just really want to thank you for, for coming by, man. Yeah. Um, and, you know, really, not only sharing your story, but, you know, talking about the importance of um, all the different aspects, especially of uh, men in the lives of, um, you know, our young men today. And uh, just really sharing your heart. We appreciate yes. that. Oh, man. Yes. You know, this was amazing. Some, thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's hard for people to share, but uh, we thank you for just being, you know, authentic, authentic and just, um, you know, Letting us hear your story. Amen. Yes. And it's Man, an amazing thing. What, what you guys are doing is amazing. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm glad to be here today. Yes. Even though I was a little nervous, but <laughs> no, that no, made don't it be nervous. Easy. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate your transparency and just, you know, even what you're doing, you know, our daughter's on boots and, yeah, you know, incredible. we, yeah, we see, you know, just how she's growing even through that. She's been part of the workshops, I think, for the past three summers yeah. as well. So, yeah. you know, and, I'm 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 getting there. I'm getting there. I, w- I want to do it one summer. Come one on. of these summers, I want to do it. <laughs> so thank you once again for coming. We really yeah. appreciate you. Thank you. We really yeah. appreciate you. Thank you. We really yeah. appreciate you. Thank you. We really appreciate.